more and more women are making their mark in the world of Formula One. Ten years ago, this used to be an exclusive men's domain, but not anymore. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to some of the power women of Formula One. I've picked out a diverse group of women to introduce you today. We've got presenters, um, we've got frontline team members, F1 management, and uh, I'm gonna kick it off with Federica Maslin. Federica uh, fronts the Sky Italia F1 coverage on television. 36 years old, she's based in Milan, Italy. She's the main presenter of Sky's F1 coverage and has attended most of the races that I've been to in the last four years. It's fair to say she's known and respected by everybody in the paddock. She started in F1 in 2014. Her first race was in Melbourne. She works on screen with the likes of Jacques Villeneuve, Marc Genet, and probably most notably, Davide Valsecchi. And I've seen this relationship blossom. They are tremendous on screen together. Very much Federica wears the pants. She is the lead. Davide is her faithful sidekick. In 2017, she was named TV Reporter of the Year. Her workload during the races is, like all of us, grinding because Sky will produce some 30 hours of content over a typical four-day event. And she's at the forefront for a lot of that content. She's fluent in four languages and she has a huge following, particularly on Instagram where she has over half a million followers. And I've seen uh, the reaction to her at the track in particular in Monza in 2019 when these guys banded together to produce this banner and presented it to her on the Thursday media day. If you ever get the chance to meet her, like everyone else, you will love her. Oh, just briefly, let me thank Surfshark VPN, because as you know, I travel a lot to places that sometimes are not that friendly to social media, so I need a VPN. Surfshark's a browser extension and an app that allows me to place my device, phone, computer anywhere in the world, allowing me to use the internet as if I was in that country. And if I log in from the US or the UK, for instance, I can access all new content on Netflix. That's a bonus. If you're looking for a VPN, go to the link below in the description, click on it, and when you get there, use the promo code KIM because you will save 83%, you will get three months free, and there's a money back guarantee. Thank you, Surfshark. Next up is the only female strategist in F1. That's Alfa Romeo's Ruth Buscom, 31 years of age. She's a first class honors graduate from the University of Cambridge Department of Engineering. She began working in Formula One with Ferrari in 2012 as a race strategist. She moved to Haas in November 2015 to become the team's strategy engineer. She left Haas in June 2016 and was quickly employed by Sauber. And her first race was in Malaysia. On a Thursday at a race meeting, she'll walk the track with Antonio Giovinazzi. On Fridays, during the on-track sessions, you'll find her on the pit wall with the rest of the Alpha team. In quali, what does she do? Well, she times the cars, counts the laps, and works out when the best time is to drop the two cars onto the track for the best chance of a fast time. During a race, she'll make the calls about when to box during safety car periods. In those instances, she has to weigh up the likelihood of the race being red flagged because a team doesn't want to pit under safety car when they can change tires for free under a red flag. Often, a strategist can play a major role in a race win, as was the case in Malaysia in 2015, when she made the call to stay out under the safety car with Seb and won the race by stopping twice while Mercedes stopped three times. So what does Ruth recommend to others keen to follow in her footsteps? Focus on maths and science at school, pursue a good engineering degree, and join a Formula student team to gain a greater understanding of the practical side of racing. Oh, and she's also an ambassador for Dare to be Different, founded by former racing driver Susie Wolf. That organisation pushes for more women in the sport. And they invite local schoolgirls 8 to 14 years of age to take part in motor racing related activities. Next up, a British TV presenter, Natalie Pinkham. Natalie's 44, married with a boy and a girl, Sky F1 presenter since 2012. She's seen by about 1.5 million viewers each race. When she started in the sport, she was one of very few women in the paddock. Now she's keen to see a more diverse F1. And as she told me, it was very much a white man's sport for much of its existence. So she's working now on setting up programs for young women to enter the sport. And as she said, there are very few roles in Formula One that can't be done well by a female. She attends about half the races and does two podcasts, F1 Nation, which is done on a weekly basis, and her own personal podcast, In the Pink, which sees her chatting with a range of characters like uh, Richard Branson, Eddie Izzard, and Paul DeResta. She started in the sport about the same time as Daniel Ricciardo, 
and she and Daniel hit it off immediately. She introduced Daniel to her now husband, and the pair clicked immediately. Why am I telling you this? Well, Daniel is the godfather to one of her children, Wilf. And interestingly, Nat didn't appoint a godfather straight after the birth. They waited six months. Why? Well, they wanted to see who showed most interest in Wilf. And Daniel was the standout person. And he'd even make special trips to the UK to see the young fella. I asked Nat, what excites you about Formula One? To which she replied, she loves the subplot. There are so many layers, she said. The technical side, the teamwork, and in her words, the more you learn, the more you want to know. Natalie Pinkham, she's an integral part of the F1 paddock. Next up is a woman you may not have heard of or seen, but let me tell you, she carries plenty of clout in the world of Formula One. This is Ellie Norman. She's the Director of Marketing and Communications for Formula One and reports directly to Stefano Domenicali. Now, given you probably don't know much about her, let me tell you what she does. She's responsible for the rebranding of the sport, bringing it into the modern era. She pushed for a new look, and that includes the new logo. She was instrumental in the We Race As One campaign, and a lot of people say, oh, it's just a slogan. But change takes time, and you have to start somewhere. And I think everybody agrees that during the time of Bernie, things were a lot different. He had no time for social media, for instance. He'd often chip Lewis Hamilton for posting on social media about what goes on in the paddock. He'd write him letters. Well, today, things are much different. She joined in 2017 when Liberty took over, and she's very fan-focused. She has spent some time delving into what the fans want, and one of the things was access. And you'll have noticed that the teams have a focus on elevating their brand and their drivers via social media. Since 2017, all teams and drivers have become much more visible. Now, that just didn't happen. Someone had to push it, and Ellie was one of the main instigators. As you know, I tend to focus more on the people in the sport than the cars and the racing, because that's what I think you want to see. F1's push to open up the sport has certainly helped me, and it's been great for the sport. And last week I asked her what her focus was at present, to which she responded, evolving the brand and looking at how F1 can attract a younger audience. Ellie Norman has the power to change things in the sport, and she is doing exactly that. Next up, Angela Cullen. Lewis Hamilton's physiotherapist. Angela has the ear of the most powerful driver in Formula One, and he'd be up there in terms of the sports most powerful too. People listen to Lewis, but Lewis listens to Angela. Yes, she's his physio, but she's also his driver, his personal assistant, his performance coach, his fashion assistant, dog walker, valet, and confidant. Of all the people in Lewis's work life, she spends the most time with him. And that's both at the track and away from the track. She often will travel with him to keep him focused on his fitness. When he wins a title, Angela is often the first person he goes to for a hug. They share the success together. She's worked in sports for more than 25 years. She's married. You've probably seen Angela on the grid where she lugs all of Lewis's stuff around in those bags. But what is in those bags? Let me tell you. She'll have everything, full race kit, including spare helmet, balaclava, gloves, fireproof underwear, shoes, uh, and she's needed that full kit uh, at least once. I know that there was one instance where the drink bottle leaked in Lewis's car and he needed to redress. She was on hand with all that stuff. Angela's the only female trainer in the group of 20. And as such, you see some crazy comments on Instagram and uh, YouTube. Why does uh, Lewis not carry bags or hold an umbrella? And I like Angela's response to that. When my boss offers to carry them, I won't let him because that would be me not doing my job. Remember, these people aren't dating each other, they're working. And you don't see any of the other drivers saying to their trainers, oh, look, let me carry that bag or hold that umbrella. That's not how it works. So what does she do during a race? Well, she'll stand in the garage, she'll watch the telecast, and at the same time she's listening to what Lewis is saying, and in the event that something happens, she's on hand all the time. New Zealander, Angela Cullen, one of the power women of F1. Next up, I'm gonna to go to Mariana Becker. Now, unless you're from Brazil, you probably don't know Mariana, but let me tell you, the first time I put a picture of her up on my Instagram page in a post, it went crazy. People just love her. And I actually went to her after that post and said, I had no idea you were so popular. Well, I've done some research on Mariana and I can tell you a few things. She heads up the F1 TV broadcast for TV Globo in Brazil. That's a uh, free-to-air television station. She fronts the telecast. She started covering F1 in 2007. 
travels to all the races as part of a crew of four. She's based in Monaco, I didn't know that. She's clearly passionate about F1 and uh, mentioned to me the fact that uh, there are three Brazilian world champions, Emerson Fittipaldi, Nelson Piquet and Ayrton Senna, and there's this rich history and love of the sport in Brazil. And I believe Brazil is the largest TV audience in the world for Formula One and she is at the heart of it. So any of my Brazilian followers will know how popular she is, and for those of you who didn't know, you do now. What about this woman? She's immensely popular in the paddock. You probably know her, this is Britta Ruska. She's the PR manager for Sebastian Vettel. When I say PR manager, I think she's more than that. I think she might be his manager. She handles everything and has done since 2010. She juggles the media's want of more time with Seb, with Seb's limited time. I find her to be immensely accessible. Oh, and she's not frightened to get her hands dirty, as was evidence after the Silverstone race this year, when she went out along with Auntie and helped Seb pick up rubbish in that grandstand opposite the uh, pit straight. Always a delight to deal with, and spends around 200 days away from home. I dare say you know a little bit more about those women, and I'd like to thank you for getting through to the end of the video. I'm gonna ask you a favor now, could you please click the like button? Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so. The notifications bell means that you'll get notified when I post videos. And if you become a member, you get a whole host of extras. You'll find all of my images at ProStarPix.com for editorial or personal use. My F1 photo books, yes, I will deliver them to almost anywhere in the world. And you'll get them at KimIllman.com along with a range of merchandise. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, head to Instagram and search at KimIllman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. this f***ing noisy f***er.